thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of Hosea, <clears throat> chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, a very difficult passage of scripture to unravel. Uh, theologians have debated as to the meaning of it throughout the centuries, where we read of a man by the name of Hosea, who has to marry a prostitute by the name of Gomer. Now, you would say to yourself, why would God allow one of his prophets to marry a prostitute? In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, in the Old Testament, someone who was caught in the act of adultery, the man and the woman, were to be put to death. Um, I'm going to try to speak this as best I can. In Hosea chapter 1, verse 2, it's illustrating how Israel is seen as unfaithful to God. See, God had married Israel in the Old Testament, and because of Israel's unfaithfulness, in verses like Isaiah chapter 50, verse 1, and Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8, God gave Israel a bill of divorce because of its spiritual adultery. In the New Testament now, God marries, in a sense, the church, us, the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 33, speak of the marriage vows that, and the responsibilities uh, that a man and a woman have in the marriage institution as God ordained in Ephesians 5, 22 to 33. But in verse 32 of Ephesians 5, it speaks of how Christ is the bridegroom and we are the bride in the marriage. And if we look at our lives, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, tells us to examine ourselves we too have committed spiritual adultery. We've sometimes committed maybe physical adultery. We've all been faithless. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 tells us that even when we're faithless, God remains faithful. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3 tells us that God loved us with an everlasting love. My friends, I believe that the passage of Scripture in Hosea chapter 1 verses 2 and 3, where we see Hosea marrying a prostitute is a picture of how Christ married us who were unfaithful to him. You see, we were all sinners gone astray. We all have sin in our lives. You see, when it comes even to sexual sins, Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, that if you look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery. And... You know, sometimes you could say, well, like for me, I've been married for 26 years, almost 27 years, and I've never physically committed adultery to, with my wife. I never cheated on her physically. But how many times have I looked at someone the wrong way? How many times have I thought wrong thoughts about somebody? How many times did I watch something on TV I shouldn't have been watching? And yet God still remains faithful to me. In John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11, a woman is caught in the act of adultery. And as I said before, according to the law of, in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, both the, both the man and the woman were supposed to be put to death, but they only bring the woman to, God, to Jesus. And that shows, them the, shows the hypocrisy because verses 5 and 6 in John 8 tells us that. They only brought the woman because they were trying to trap Jesus. But Jesus who had the right, he wrote the law, he is the law, he's God. He said, I do not condemn this woman. He without sin cast the first stone. Christ could have condemned her, but he said, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. My friends, I look back at my life and I see how often I've played the harlot, how often I've spiritually played the prostitute, being unfaithful to my Lord, but yet he remains faithful, as I said before, even when I'm faithless. Even when I've been caught in the act of spiritual adultery, he has not condemned me. When others have tried to throw stones at me, Christ never threw a stone at me. We need to repent, though, friends, my friends. When we do commit sin, we need to confess it and repent. We're not to cover it up with good works or try to be, uh, um, uh, to do good or blame others for our own faults. We, we take responsibility. We come to the Lord confessing these things. I hope that this little passage of scripture in Hosea chapter 1 verses 2 and 3 where we read of 
this prophet marrying a prostitute is a picture of the marriage between Christ and the church. Even when we as the bride of Christ have been faithless, when we look at your life right now and examine yourself, what is it that you're not faithful to God with? Are you bitter at somebody? Are you resentful? Are you jealous of something going on? Are you proud? Are you proud of the money you have? Are you proud of the color of your skin? These are all sins. Are you angry with someone? Do you harbor resentment and anger? Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 to 26, ang a murder is not taking a gun and shooting someone. It's, it's thinking lowly of someone, being, being angry at somebody from the heart. You see, God looks at your heart, and if we really examine ourselves, how often we've been faithless to the Lord. Let it go, my friends. Confess it to the Lord. Get back into a right relationship with him and the marriage vows that you have with Christ. And again, let us not beat ourselves up. We all commit sins. We all have acted the prostitute, the harlot, just like Gomer. But just like the prophet Hosea was faithful to this woman, God, through Jesus Christ, has been faithful to us, even when we've been faithless. I'm getting older and I look back at my life, how oftentimes I've been faithless to the Lord, but yet he has always been faithful and true to me. And I'm so thankful. Feel free to share today's devotional video. I know it was a little tough subject. If you see this on YouTube, you'll see the subscribe button on the bottom. Feel free to subscribe as God leads you to my page and to all my dear brothers and sisters in Christ on Facebook. Thank you for sharing these devotionals to your pages, groups, and friends as we get the Word of God out together in Christ. Take care and look to the faithful one.